All right, gang, let's talk about how to pack a rucksack. So first and foremost, why? Why do we choose a rucksack? Well, when we're out on a mission, we need to make sure that we have room to bring additional or oversized equipment. And additionally, the rucksack gives us more longevity in the field. So when we start packing our rucksack, let's first consider some constraints. Does our unit have an SOP or a packing list? If so, we're gonna wanna make sure that we follow that and consider adding to the SOP, the SOP or packing list that's your baseline, but based on your mission, based on METC, we may wanna add some things to the rucksack. We also wanna consider whether or not the rucksack is the appropriate choice. On some missions, uh, it may be a better idea to go with an assault pack, depending on how long we're gonna be out and what we need to carry. All right, so first and foremost, let's talk about the fitting of the rucksack. Now, the Army Ishimali rucksack attaches to this plastic frame. It can be moved up or down on the frame. And what we wanna do is attach the rucksack to the frame with the help of a partner so that when the rucksack is worn, the kidney pack or the kidney pad lies at the small of the back or at the waistline or just above. And the shoulder straps come over each shoulder. They're even on both sides. And the sternum strap is able to be attached across the chest without riding up to the neck. And we wanna make sure that it's comfortable. So I don't want this rucksack uh, to cause any numbness or tingling in my hands or fingers. And I certainly don't want to feel off balance when I wear the rucksack. I don't want my kidney pad hitting me in the, in the butt or the hamstrings as it's worn. All of that is extremely uncomfortable and will make for a very poor rucksack experience. All right, let's talk about uh, once we get it fitted, we wanna make sure that we roll any of the straps. Um, go ahead and roll those up and then tape them or Velcro them to make sure that they're not dangling. Those tend to get caught up uh, in things like vehicles or helicopters as we're moving around. All right, <clears throat> so now that we've talked about all of that, uh, a couple other points. Any attachments that you might have to the rucksack, like these canteens, these Alice clips tend to uh, give way without a lot of pressure. So using some 550 cord to attach that to the rucksack, as well as these sustainment pouches, just making sure that nothing comes loose uh, when it's worn, but definitely the two cords. Also, <clears throat> On the back here, I've got my entrenching tool or e-tool uh, connected in the middle of the rucksack. And uh, we'll talk about that as we get into uh, tightening up the rucksack. Okay. All right. So some principles. When we're packing a rucksack, consider that we want the most dense and the heaviest items high up in the rucksack and close to our back. So those items should be right here on the top of the rucksack and then close to my back as the rucksack is worn less dense and less heavy objects, we're gonna to wanna to put below those items. And um, for instance, this sleep system is moderately heavy and uh, it makes a good foundation if we put that in first and then put any ammunition or radio or anything like that on top of it. So those are the, the heavy and moderately heavy items. Anything that's lightweight and loose, anything like jackets, clothing, those items can then be packed around it further away from your, your back as worn so that it doesn't uh, create a balance issue for you as you're wearing the rucksack. All right, so let's start putting that in here. Note that I have my wet weather bag it is in the rucksack. I've turned it inside out. The rubbery outside of the, the wet weather bag tends to grip against the inside of the rucksack so that it doesn't shift around. And then the inside is nylon, which is slick and it makes it fairly easy for me to move items in and out of the rucksack. Now I'm gonna put this sleep system in first here. Now, there are some folks who will attach this divider that's inside the rucksack and then use this separate pocket on the bottom here for their sleep system. This is, this is an okay idea. However, when you do this, you're gonna need two wet weather bags one for the anything that's in this lower compartment and then one for anything that's in the upper compartment of the rucksack. And that makes sure that everything in the rucksack is waterproofed. We're not concerned solely with 
just rain, imagine that you have to cross a river with your rucksack or build a poncho raft with your rucksack. In any of those instances, the entire rucksack could become submerged and we wanna make sure that everything inside stays dry. That one, makes it less heavy and protects all of the contents and two, makes it buoyant and allows us to do those river crossings uh, without a rucksack weighing us down in the water, which is important. Okay, so I've got my sleep system in the bottom here. I mentioned other heavy items. So I've got a bandolier here for M4 magazines. This could be um, linked ammunition. I could also put a camelback in here, um, which will give me an additional three quarts of water. Um, all of those things I wanna make sure again, they're high and close to my back when packed. Other things that are less heavy, like MREs can get packed around that. And the nice thing about MREs is if the MREs have not been field stripped, they're inherently waterproof so they don't actually have to be inside the wet weather bag. They can be packed outside. Okay, so any clothing, I mentioned some clothing items. That stuff can be packed around the sleep system inside the wet weather bag. And I'm just using some most jackets and things to simulate my clothing items. Any other items that you want to keep dry, like a weapons cleaning kit, good idea to go ahead and throw those in the wet weather bag as well. All right, you may decide to take some comfort items like a jet boil, which is pretty handy for making coffee or warming up your, your shaving water. Now, once these items are packed into the wet weather bag, if it's turned inside out, you'll need to create a gooseneck on the wet weather bag. So I gather all the material for the wet weather bag together And then I have to gooseneck it over and use the strings coming out of the wet weather bag in order to wrap it up tight. All right. Okay. Now, often the sleeping pad will go on top of this, on top of everything that's packed in a wet weather bag, like so, and the flap over the top. Or you can opt to carry the inflatable sleeping pad, which I've just divided this in half and rolled it up nice and tight. That can go inside the wet weather bag this is a nice option if you're carrying a tripod that would take up this space or an AT4 rocket launcher or something like that instead of the foam sleeping mat. However, the foam sleeping pad is also useful if you're gonna breach a wire obstacle with dismounts. You can lay it over top of the wire and then use a, a body breach technique and this will help protect the soldier that's laying on top of the wire. All right. Before I do that, let's talk sustainment pouches here. So I wanna make sure that I have my wet weather gear accessible in the sustainment pouches. So I'm gonna put my wet weather trousers and my wet weather top. You could also choose to use your Vortex instead of your wet weather top and bottom. And a poncho, all in a sustainment pouch. It could be in both sustainment pouches, doesn't matter but pick one and follow your SOP. So if it starts to rain, I know where I'm gonna go to get out my poncho. My poncho I'm gonna use to turtle shell or wrap up my rucksack as it's laying on the ground to keep it dry. 
And then my wet weather top and bottom are for me to keep me dry as I go about my duties. All right. Um, again, those can be split between the two sustainment pouches. Now, on the other sustainment pouch, it's important if you're carrying any mission essential items, we're gonna put those over here. So if I need um, a thermite grenade or a CLS bag, if I'm filling that role for my squad, if I need something like flex cuffs, if I'm on an EWN search team, any sort of signaling devices that I might need for the mission, or bungee cords, something like that, if I'm gonna make a, uh, a poncho hooch or a planning tent out of my poncho. Uh, all of that is good stuff to carry over here in the mission essential items section in this sustainment pouch. All right. Okay. A good spot for that headlamp. Just to throw it right here in the top flap. You can also put any other, you know, maps or images or anything that you're not using immediately on your patrol and you need quick access to that can go in the top flat pouch here. Okay. And then we're going to throw that over. Okay. Okay. Now again, we want to make sure these are nice and tight. I want to make sure that I keep my buckles somewhere where I can access them. I don't want to run the buckle underneath uh, the rucksack or way on top. I want to be able to find it in the dark. So I'm going to put that here. If I'm packing this rucksack to use on some sort of uh, physical training event, like I'm going to go do uh, a ruck march, I can take a PT belt and run that around the rucksack uh, to give me a little more visibility at night so I don't get run over by a car, which is always a good thing. All right, and uh, I always keep a carabiner as well here on my rucksack. So if I'm doing any sort of rope bridges, I can attach that to the top of uh, the rucksack and then I can use that to move my rucksack along my, my rope bridge, but also handy in a lot of other circumstances as well. Okay. All right. So that's good to have. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> so I'll make sure I didn't miss anything here. Okay. Um, remember if, if we're not sure what we're going to pack for our mission, the number one things that we need to pack are water and ammo. Okay. Top two, make sure you pack water, make sure you bring ammo. After that, remember, you're going to need your radio, extra batteries, antennas, CLS bag, uh, and a litter for the Aiden Litter team. You'll need a camera, flex cuffs, and uh, sensitive site exploitation or EPW search bags. Also consider thermite and bungee cords, a hygiene kit, especially if you're gonna be on the, in the field for more than 24 hours. Uh, a rucksack will also help us carry any breaching equipment that we might need, like breaching rounds, uh, hooligan tools, or anything of that nature. Also, mortar rounds for the mortar team, so everyone can carry a couple of mortar rounds and drop them off at the mortar point uh, should you make contact. I mentioned a tripod for the 240s, and then cleaning kit for weapons. Okay. All right, so last note here, once you get this rucksack packed, it is very important that you take it out and use it. Take your rucksack out and go ruck, uh, ruck around with it, uh, and make sure that it's comfortable. Make sure that you can do long miles with your rucksack on without becoming fatigued, without getting that numbness or tingling in the arms and fingers, and make sure that it, it doesn't ride too low. That's also important. Now, there is a, a weak point here in the shoulder straps where we, they built in these quick releases. I've seen these uh, many times come loose on soldiers as they're ruck marching. So this is one thing to watch out for as you're going out and, and using your rucksack, make sure that these are nice and strong and they're not gonna give way on you. Uh, but that's just one important piece about, um, you know, testing your equipment, testing your rucksack while you're out there. Now, please feel free to send me any questions, and uh, that's going to be it for the Combat Corner.